Hey, hello, hello, hello. Um, this is Mark Carlin, the Results Hypnotist, and I'm speaking to you from beautiful New York City. That's right, the home of frigid temperature. But today, you know what? It felt like springtime. It was a wonderful day. I mean, last uh, last few days, we were getting um, uh, temperatures in the single digits, and now we were back around 50 degrees. Truly, when you get used to that very, very cold, cold air, and you don't even get used to it, but when you experience it for a few days, your body kind of acclimates towards it, so that then when you start to feel uh, temperatures in the 30s to 50s, it feels downright warm and comfortable. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because we humans, we're capable of getting used to many things. Take, for example, your smoking habit. Yeah, <laughs> this is the, the stop smoking tip page. Might as well bring in the smoking problem. Just take, for example, your smoking habit. If you recall the very first time you started to smoke, it was probably really uncomfortable. And it might have been as uncomfortable or even more uncomfortable than it is to experience single digit temperatures in the middle of winter when you haven't experienced anything or you haven't gotten used to anything colder than the 30s or 40s. When you all of a sudden feel that frigid temperature and that cold wind, it feels downright uncomfortable and you want to do whatever you can to be comfortable. Now, if you had to live in an environment where the temperature was in single digits on a regular basis, that would become somewhat more comfortable than it is when you just experience it for the first or second time. Because what was uncomfortable over time becomes your comfort zone. And when you first started smoking, you were outside your comfort zone. Your body rejected cigarettes. Smoke in your lungs, not supposed to be there. We're human beings. We're living organisms. We thrive on oxygen. We thrive on fresh air not on smoke. In reality, we, we're designed, like every other animal on the planet, to run away from smoke and fire. That's right, that's us. Unless we're a fireman where we trained ourselves to run towards fire, we're gonna get the hell out of Dodge when we see a fire coming or we're, we're close to a fire. It's uncomfortable. We know we're gonna burn up and die we know it's not a place for us to hang out unless we're around a campfire where we're roasting marshmallows or, or weenies. Fire is not something that we want to invite into our bodies, and neither is smoke. So the whole idea that you've grown accustomed to smoking is kind of ridiculous, number one. Number two, it took you a while to grow accustomed to it. You were outside of your comfort zone. You had to work really hard at letting that become your new comfort zone. And now when you want to go and quit, it's going to take a little bit of time for you to become more comfortable not smoking. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit uh, of a challenge. It's going to be – you're going to have to devote a little bit of time to stopping smoking, to quitting smoking. Now – if you think about it, when you first began to smoke, you devoted an amount of time to learn how to grow comfortable with it. It didn't happen right away. It took up time. You were invested in learning to smoke because it, it, in your mind, it had some value. Now, the value that you get from smoking when you're a, when you're a youngster, when you're a, a teenager, is that it, it, it allows you to hang out with people that 
maybe you look up to. Maybe they're the cool group. I know when I started smoking, there were advertisements on TV that featured a gentleman called the Marlboro Man. Marlboro Man was on a horse. He had a cowboy hat and he had this free range, this confident air, this strong and silent and very attractive and appealing character. And he became a role model for millions of people, including me. I was someone who wanted to be confident, who wanted to feel comfortable, who just wanted to enjoy myself. And uh, smoking gave us the promise, gave me the promise of being that type of person. Nowadays, and this was no different back then, nowadays we don't have, we don't have advertisements on TV, but we still have role models who smoke cigarettes. I don't know who the role model was for you, but I'm sure you had some role models who did smoke cigarettes, whether it was your friends who were introducing you to smoking cigarettes or a relative that you knew or maybe a parent. These people were role models that you emulated. So you had a desire to, to smoke cigarettes. Plus, if there's a group of kids our age that are, that are smoking and uh, they're, they're looked upon as uh, maybe someone that you would like to be a part of, a group that you would like to join, that's a powerful motivator. Because we're herd animals, us humans, we're herd animals. We like to follow a herd, be a part of a group. That's who we are. And uh, that's a very powerful influencer. In fact, we're programmed to be part of the group. In fact, we knew that if we're not part of a group, it's almost like a death sentence because we, we really form communities and support each other and help each other. Uh, you know, during, let's say, let, bring it back to your imagination using caveman time. You know, during the caveman time, uh, if you were thrown out of the cave, meaning if you were thrown out of the group, that was a death sentence. So to be part of that group, to be to be part of that herd is considered a life or death proposition. It's very important to be part of the group. And when you, you targeted a group to be a part of, and that group is smoking, you're going to be highly influenced to become that smoker. So you had a good reason to continue to learn how to smoke. And that's what, what happened. You learned how to smoke and you gave it the amount of time necessary for that to take place. If you want to quit smoking, you have to give yourself a certain amount of time to retrain yourself once again to become that non-smoker. So it's just very logical in an in a approach to doing this. One of the things that make it a little bit more difficult is that over all these years that you've been smoking, you've learned to use cigarettes as a way to address an emotion, to address a feeling. A lot of people tell me that uh, they smoke because it makes them relax, which to me tells me that they're a little bit more nervous or anxious than they would like to be, than they're comfortable with. And when they smoke, that nervousness or that anxiety or that level of fear drops down lower so it's more handled. It's, 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 they're better able to handle it. Cigarettes is a way to address an emotion. Another emotion that comes up, people tell me about, is that uh, they get bored. So boredom is just a message telling you that whatever it is that you're doing, whatever, not, it could be whatever you're doing right now, or it could be the big picture, what you're doing in your life overall isn't stimulating enough, is not satisfying your need to improve. It's telling you that you feel that you're stagnating wherever you are. A way to address that feeling of, of boredom, well, the way that you learn to address the feeling of boredom is to distract yourself from it by smoking. So instead of doing what your inner mind is telling you, you're, that part of your body that's saying, hey, you know what? You need to, to improve yourself in some way so that you 
find things that are stimulating for you, you find something that feel, makes you feel good to do, you're distracting yourself from, uh, from searching for a new goal to make you a better person, and you're just living life kind of coasting along in your comfort zone. The way to address that boredom is to find something of value that you can do at the moment instead of looking to distract yourself with cigarettes. Okay, Every emotion has a meaning and the right way to respond to it. Very often, instead of learning or figuring out what the right way to respond to your emotions are, as a smoker, you learned to distract yourself from it. So you keep yourself floating along at a, at a, at a comfortable level that is really, overall, not comfortable. You're just distracting yourself from the discomfort you're feeling and not allowing that discomfort to make you grow stronger. Not allow that discomfort to help you to, to reach real satisfying goals. So you use cigarettes to, to think you're, you're satisfied. It's a way of, a, of keeping us in our comfort zone. That's what it is. And in order for you to quit, you're going to move out of your comfort zone. I use hypnotic techniques to help people to change the way that they think, the way that they feel, and the way that they believe. I give people uh, abilities to feel wonderful doing the things that are positive for them on their way to becoming a non-smoker. So whatever good feelings they were getting from cigarettes, they no longer get it from cigarettes. They get it from something else, something that's helpful to them to do. And it's easy for them to do. So instead of reaching for a cigarette, they maybe reach for some fresh water. Instead of reaching for a cigarette, maybe they do some simple exercises. Instead of reaching for some water, maybe instead of reaching for a cigarette, maybe they walk around the block. Something else gives them the pleasure that they were getting from cigarettes, and it's a healthier way of responding to whatever emotion is coming up. And you get the benefit of learning what that emotion is as well, if you want and then learning how to address it. And so this stopping smoking process can help you to become the person you wanted to be all along. And that's what we call a silver lining. Give me a call. We can strategize over this. It's an easy process. It's something that you'll probably kick yourself for not starting sooner. My number is 212-223-1832. And I can work with you anywhere in the world. Give me a call. Hey, thanks for being here. And thankfully, the weather in New York is getting warmer. <laughs> Take care.